Guys, it is our third episode of Ask Me Anything. I'm Coach She, one of the coaching team here at CFE, and today on the podcast, the man, the myth, the legend, Dallas Amson gets to fire any question he has at me. Nothing held back, no filters, the real talk. We're going to get it here on the podcast today. Stick around. Welcome to the CrossFit Edwardsville Community Podcast, where we hear and learn from our coaches, CrossFitters, and Glen Ed community leaders. Now, here are your hosts. Dallas and Greg. All right. I am uh, welcome, everybody. I'm getting a ton of lag on my side. So hopefully, you guys saw that whole video. Welcome to the CrossFit Edwardsville podcast, everybody, where we do get to occasionally chat with some of our CFE athletes, uh, the moms and dads that make up our community, as well as some of our local Glen Ed community owners. But one of our primary focuses here is to talk with and learn from our CFE coaches. And today we do get to chat with Coach G again on an Ask Me Anything. G Scale, are you ready for this? This is number three. Probably not, but we're going to roll anyway. <laughs> Am I, nervous? Like, I feel like I'm a little bit nervous. I got the butterflies in my stomach. I don't know where this is all going to go. Well, Maybe it's exciting. I'm excited. There you go. So, so actually, that's something I, I train people on regularly, a quick insert here. When I'm talking with public speakers and they specifically say, I've got the butterflies in my stomach, I explain to them, and so maybe this might be helpful for you or for anyone listening, I explain to them that what is happening physiologically and psychologically could be two different things. Physiologically, you are getting adrenaline going when there is an unknown or you're getting ready to start a race or you and I felt it at the beginning of a Metcom where we're like, all right, I start to feel that thing. But what people tell themselves when they're getting on a podcast or when they're going to do a public speaking engagement or get in front of a group of people, physiologically, there's adrenaline. Psychologically, they're telling themselves they're nervous or that this could be unknown or that they have, quote, butterflies in their stomach. And the way I like to reframe it for people in my in my crafter keynote program is physiologically just let happen what's happening. But what you want to do is shift psychologically from nervousness or butterflies to actually excitement and readiness because I'm so excited for what I'm about to say. I'm so excited to tackle that stage or do that workout or whatever it is that if we can shift psychologically, the adrenaline is still the same physiologically, but we reframe it in a way that's more positive and more meaningful toward proactive things happening on the stage or the microphone. Well, Dallas, I'm proud to say I feel excited and I feel ready. Boom. Love it. Love it. So this is the Ask Me Anything uh, or or what I lovingly call Ask G Anything. And so in this one, G, I'm going to talk to you about about your just lifestyle habits. So we've talked in previous episodes of the podcast where we've discussed your morning routine, my morning routine, some of those things that set our days right some of the weekend routines, some of the evening routines, et cetera. But you're a man who, uh, I don't want to say lives by a code, but once you start a habit, it's very difficult. It's almost as though it goes against your very grain to break it. Once you decide to kickstart it in. And so what I would like to know about, habit requires some level of discipline. Sure. But... How is it some of these habits that you've maintained? I mean, you've been taking cold morning showers now for what, two years unbroken? Just about? No, we're more like six or seven by now. Of the cold showers? Yeah. My, oh, okay. I, I actually went back and I found a video I'd recorded in 2016 or 2017 where I spoke about my initial explorations of the cold showers. So just for example, that was what, seven years ago? Okay, so six, six, seven years on that. Plus, we know I know you eat chili almost every day. I'm pretty sure, unless there's sure. like a meat, a steak birthday cake. Yeah, <laughs> Which I, I, I don't, I don't want to give to get the uh, the wrong idea. Um, aspiring to eat chili for dinner every night is not something anybody should aspire to. <laughs> no, no, no. But the the the, 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 so I'd like to talk to you about number one habit formation. Sure. And then number two, habit maintaining, habit consistency. Because for a lot of us, we get on the horse, we fall off the horse, we say, I'll start again on Monday. Sure. 
So talk a little bit about number one, habit formation, the drive, the desire, the will. And then number two, how you maintain some of those things over time. And do you ever pull the plug on a habit and go, nah, this is not serving me. So I'm not going to turn it into a habit. So uh, habit formation, habit assessment, and habit maintaining. How about that? Sure. So I find the second question a little easier to answer than the first. But sure. as far as the first question goes, and this is a very important conversation to have because this goes to the heart of ultimately your effectiveness in any kind of personal change. Yeah. Consistency over time is a core ingredient. We all know it is. It has to be there in order for there to be meaningful, lasting personal change. And if we're speaking about habit formation, I want to share, Dallas may know this, but just in case it's new to our audience in any way, the, the traditional thinking, the conventional thinking is that you need to hit 21 days of an activity for it to become a habit. That's been like the traditional thinking. There is actually data out there now on what does it really take right. for something to not just be something you did in a season, but an actual lifestyle behavior. And the, the real number is 66 or 67 yeah. consistent days of that behavior on repeat, on the easy days, on the hard days, in order for it to actually become habit. So. For our audience here, if you were thinking, if I can just get to three weeks, it becomes a habit. It's actually like three times. Right. That much. Maybe that's encouraging. Maybe that's discouraging for well, you. You need to know that going in. And if I can insert here, so the 21-day mark so from some of what I've learned is that's actually more on breaking a bad habit, like cre decreating a, a pattern in your life. If you can hit 21 days of decreation, but what occurs is you create a habit vacuum and even a sure. time vacuum. So if you don't fill that with something, it is a heck of a lot easier to fall back into an old pattern sure. because number one, the time is, has not been filled with something or the pattern or, or practice has not been filled with something. So the 21 day mark is the thing I've always heard is like a decreation of a bad habit. Sure. But unless you put in place the formation of a new habit, that vacuum will eventually pull the quote addict sure. back. Right. Yeah. And this is an interesting topic. I actually want to put a bookmark on that. If you could just make a quick note for us to come back to that a little bit later in this podcast, sure. Dallas, I will address that because I feel like it would fit a little bit better sequentially later on. Because I want to move into the, the second topic that you brought up, which is maintenance of habits. Yeah. And on this podcast, many times we've we've brought up the, the Jerry Seinfeld example of right get the thing done today, mark your calendar, and then next day do the same thing, the next day do the same thing, and just don't break the chain, right? Yeah. But I want to speak about motivation for a moment here, for because that's such an important topic, and I think often misunderstood, often misunderstood the role of motivation in your consistency, because there will be days where Dallas or John Smith or Jane Smith you're really feeling that motivation. You're powerfully driven. Just so everybody go. knows, of those three people, I'm yeah. the only real one. <laughs> <laughs> there will be plenty of days that right. you're super motivated to go do the thing. And I mean, there are going to be just as many, if not more days, that you're not motivated to go do a thing that you need right. to do. And I want everybody to know that's okay. And that is completely normal. Yeah. Motivation, or really any... Any important feeling in your life, you're going to go through ebbs and flows. Like in your important, intimate relationship with your spouse, there'll be ebbs and flows to how much of the passion you feel, how much love you feel. In your journey of fitness, there's going to be ebbs and flows to how much motivation and drive that you feel as you go along. So it's important that we set a stage and an understanding right off the bat that motivation is a fleeting experience that you can't necessarily build a long-term habit upon sure does it help when it's there hell yes it helps a lot when it's there and the more motivation that you can stack on top of an activity or a behavior or a change the more successful you are 
likely to be. And so toward that end, like if you know what is your very powerful, compelling reason why, why do I want to make this change? Why am I getting out of bed early in the morning to go on my walk or go to the CrossFit gym or prepare my breakfast or whatever it is? Yeah. Having a, a reason why to do that, that is powerfully emotionally connected, the more you can you can phrase it in a way that is emotionally driving for you, the stronger that why will be, the more effective it'll be to help you get out and actually do a thing. Yeah. But your motivations are going to evolve over time as well. This is a really important thing for a lot of people to embrace and harness because for so many people, they need to hit a rock bottom before they do anything in terms of a healthy journey. They yeah. got to hit a rock bottom where they just feel like shit or where they know their spouse does not look at them the same way anymore. And that just hurts right in the heart. You feel that yeah. or you just get to the point where you, you don't like looking at you. Like, I feel like this blob and I hate that. I hate that. Like I feel that way about my own body. Like, yeah. You may have to hit some sort of rock bottom yeah. for you to get the fire up to go and do a thing. Yeah. And one of one of the core tenets that I have that I've never really spoken a lot about is that I don't feel that there is a bad motivation. There's not a bad kind of motivation. Sure. There are healthier motivations and maybe less healthy motivations, but whatever Tinder, whatever you whatever Tinder you have to throw on the fire today, throw it on the fire today. Sometimes it's I am sick and tired of feeling like shit. I don't want to yeah. feel like this anymore. I'm going to the gym to get my fix because I know after this workout, I will feel better. Or maybe it's, I really want to attract that boy or that girl. And I know that if I get myself into better shape, I'll be able to do that. Or maybe it's, I know there is an actual, is it fair? No, but there is a bias in business. The healthier yeah. you look, the more you look like a winner, the more likely you are to be promoted at your job. Is that fair? No. Is that hard data and science? Does that exist? Hell yes, that exists. Yeah. So you may say like, you know what? I want to advance faster in my company. When I present, I need to look like a winner. Whatever that motivation is on that day, harness it, grab it, throw that shit on the fire and let it burn. Yeah. There's so many of the world's most successful people are motivated as much by the stick as they are by the carrot. You yeah. get look, look at like elite level performers, the CrossFit Games champion, Rich Froning. He hates to lose a lot more than he loves to win. He's right. more motivated by av like avoiding the feeling of losing that he hates so much. And that's what drives him to train so hard and eat in a healthy way and do the workouts yeah. he doesn't feel like doing. You look at elite level performers like Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant, they intentionally keep a chip on their shoulder because that drives them in a powerful way. And if you have some yeah. kind of chip on your shoulder, I certainly do. Like I was – ostracized and picked on and bullied when I was little because I was small and weak and vulnerable and awkward and had no social skills. And for me, like I just couldn't hang socially, so to speak. And yeah. I remember how it made me feel when I was little that I was weak and vulnerable and an easy target for bullies. And that drives me many days now like yeah but i don't feel like going to train but i'm going to because yeah. i want to be the kind of person when i walk into a room every man there knows you don't fuck with that guy you can gotta tell in the way that i carry myself that i am unfuck withable or at least i'm not an easy target that chip on my shoulder drives me a lot of days but it's also true that the chip on the shoulder or the thing that makes you angry and that's the reason you go to the gym or that's the reason why you want to get a lean shredded body, your revenge body. You're mad about the relationship that went south and you want to, I'm going to show them they were wrong about me. 
I'm going to yes. get my sexiest body. That that darkness is a great fire, but it also can be a corrosive inside of your heart. So right. while you can use that to your advantage, it is also equally helpful to find a carrot in the system to chase. Right. Yep. There's one that I heard of the other day that resonated with me. And I want to share on this podcast that this is this is what got me into the gym today. A very famous person said, I work this hard for the way my wife looks at me. Yeah. And that one, that clicked with me. I'm like, yeah, I want to turn my wife's head when I walk past in my boxers. You know what I mean? That's what drove me in the gym today. That's a carrot. That's a positive motivation. I want to feel good. I know that if I go to the gym, I do the hard thing, I show up, do the workout, I'm going to feel fantastic when it's done. Yeah. It's like Greg Skelly before a workout and Greg Skelly after a workout are almost two different people. I'm yeah. happier. Yeah. I'm more stress resilient. I'm less irritable. I'm just more at peace. I'm at calm. I have that endorphin rush. I feel good the whole rest of the day after the workout is done. Before I go in and do my morning workout, I'm never in the mood to exercise, ever. <laughs> but sometimes, like, hey, I know I'm going to go. I'm going to do the hard thing that I don't feel like doing today. I'm going to feel great when it's done. That's the carrot. That's the positive motivation. To move in a positive direction is just as helpful as moving away from something that you hate. So Dallas, the, the, go ahead, go ahead. Well, no, I, this is great. I'm I'm glad I asked you this question because obviously you've got a you have a strong grasp on on that. And one of the other ways, everybody, if you look up drive theory in psychology, you'll be able to read a little bit more about this topic if you if you so want to. But the basic idea is uh, there are certain things we are driven by thirst to get the water, right? So there are certain things that are physiological, but for most people. It's either away driven, like fear or scarcity driven away from the thing or toward driven, reward driven. Um, what they have found is a lot of the away driven stuff will work short term to get you away from the fire just long enough. So when the doctor gives you the report, hey, if you don't fix this, blank will happen in the next three to six months. A lot of people get motivated to get the heck away from that thing. But the toward motivation is the carrot to your word instead of the stick, that's a longer term, more intrinsic motivation, more intrinsic drive. It's more aspirational on sure. as those hierarchy of needs It's more aspirational towards self-actualization. However, and that one lasts longer. It's almost like one is a short burn and one's a longer pure fuel. Um, sure. And I, I heard somebody say one time, you leverage the dark. There are times where you have to leverage the dark, leverage the fear. You go to the dark energy, the aggression, all of that. And that will spur you for a while. But but obviously there's a bit of a bat, like you have to know both and, right? When to right. use either or to get you ultimately toward your goal. I love what you said there about what's the fire you need to put, what's the sticks, the kindling you need to put on the fire today. That was, right. that was awesome. Because again, my my precept here is that there is no bad motivation if it gets you to do a good thing right, right here right now that maybe you don't feel like doing and right. if 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 you believe that you have to get to some point where you feel the motivation and that will be your trigger to go and do the thing you're going to handicap yourself forever there's going to be plenty of days that you don't feel like fill in the blank I don't feel like going to work. I don't feel like eating healthy. I don't feel I like don't whatever feel like it is. My children food. Yeah, there's going to be plenty of days that you don't feel that. It's right. on those days, find any motivation that it takes to get you to do that thing. And it will evolve over time. Maybe yeah. right now it's, I want to compete with this person in the gym. I want to compete in this CrossFit thing. Maybe that motivates you. I know that I can, you know, if... If, as long as I'm just ahead of Patrick Cloud in the workouts, sure. I'm doing good in my workouts. Right. But 
if that is not what's the kindling that like, if you can't make that kindling burn today find anything else and go with it and if you don't find anything you can't find anything to motivate you fucking show up anyway because you'll be glad that you did when you've done it and you will for sure feel bad about it if you take the easy way out and you cop out and don't show up so I made a joke there just a moment ago, but what you were saying kind of leads into that. So I made the joke of, you know, some days there are days my wife and I look at each other and we're like, ah, if we didn't have to make dinner for the kids today, or if we didn't have to do this, sometimes it's honestly too, just the simple act of the adoption of responsibility. Yes. This is a choice I made. And I, and I heard um, Bob Proctor said, you are free to make your choices you are not free to choose the consequences of those choices. Correct. So to, you, to use the joke about my kids here, my wife and I made a choice to have children. Now we've adopted the responsibility that sometimes we just have to take care of them even when we don't. I'm not motivated either way on that. I'm simply doing it because I have agreed to the adoption of responsibility. Yes. And I think, I think so there's a third potentiality in between those two motivations G. Sure. The third potentiality being, no, I simply committed to this. I ado- yeah. I told myself I would adopt the responsibility, whether it's a long term game or not. Right. And so I will do this because I made myself responsible and accountable to someone else for it. And, and what you're describing, I think, in a piece, a piece of that goes to what we've described about your identity, how you perceive yourself. Yeah. I am an actively engaged, caring, loving father to my son. And therefore, yeah. how, what kind of behavior follows from this empowered identity that I have written for myself, this powerful vision of yeah. myself that I want to step into? And this is actually a really good motivation that I think a lot of parents miss out on. And this is going to be very powerfully convicting for a lot of people when I say it, but you are the most empower you're the most powerful and important influence in your kids lives what yeah. what is your behavior communicating to your kids today are you eating in a healthy way or are you just telling them to do that are right. you making a choice to live an active lifestyle and go out and exercise or are you just taking them to soccer games while you are packing on the pounds eating all the crap concessions food, what is your behavior teaching your kids? Because the floor of your behavior is going to be the ceiling of theirs. And the example you set matters more than any words coming out of your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like that, whatever behavior standard you're setting in your own behavior is going to either condemn your kids to a lifetime of struggle or it's going to bless them with a lifetime of energy and success and feeling good and an amazing relationship with themselves you can give them the gift or you can give them the curse and you have to choose because when we talk about responsibility there are some things you just cannot outsource nobody else can be the parent to your kids Nobody else can set an example for them. It has to be you. You cannot outsource your health to somebody else. That is your responsibility. You either man up and take that responsibility or live with the consequences. You don't get to choose the consequences. Yeah, I uh, I froze there just a little bit at your very end, but I, I think I think that point is made, and and if you can hear me, uh, yep. Uh, right on. Still with me over there, Dallas? Well, am I back? I can hear you. Am I back? Can you hear me now? Yep, you're great. Anyway, I think that's probably uh a good note to finish this podcast on. Yeah, for sure. I think so. Um, so we'll, we will have to, we know ask me anything. Number four is going to include the idea of bad habit decreation, the 21 day versus the 66 day. 
Uh, I've got that note because we want to talk about that habit vacuum a little bit, but I, I yeah. do think we've covered what we should and need to cover on this today. So, so G for the next, ask me anything. Uh, your ask me anything question is going to start with habit vacuums and how to fill those, especially during the 21. Absolutely. Absolutely. Love it. Great topic. Frozen. We'll say, we'll save that for next time. Something to be excited about for next time. I think I'm back. I can see you. I don't know if you can see me or not. We're good. Uh, everybody, we're going to end this now because one of the two of us has a bad connection or both of us do. So we're going to end it here before it gets ugly. Uh, G, thank you so much for asking me anything, Tom, man. And uh, I'll let you go ahead and sing us out. Guys, thanks for the gift of your time and your attention. Hopefully you guys got something great from this podcast. If you did, leave a note in the comments below. Share with us what resonated with you. What's going to be your motivation for the gym today? Or what's going to be your motivation to lead your kids by example today? What's driving you? What's the fire that burns inside of you today? Let us know in the comments below. And we'll see you guys in the next episode.